Next up, Nate Atkins, Libertarian Party of Minnesota. Welcome to the committee. State your name for the record. Thank you very much. My name is Nate Atkins. I am the political director of the Libertarian Party of Minnesota. Uh, while we don't have a member of our party in the legislature, our elected officials represent over 5 million residents in the state of Minnesota. I appreciate the courtesy of this committee allowing our party to testify on such an important bill. Uh, when it comes to licensing and really the, the impacts that, that could have and the relationship it has to the environment, I would encourage the members of this committee to consider how licensing can affect uh, economic, economic opportunities of Minnesotans. Licensing requirements, as envisioned by the government, are intended to ensure that uh, consumers are able to trust those they patronize for various goods and services. I think that's commonly accepted by many people as, a, as the intention of licensing uh, requirements. But no matter how well-intentioned government policy, one must consider the real world unintended effects of those policies. I would like to see a market for cannabis in Minnesota where family-owned farms can not only cultivate small amounts of cannabis, but also bring it to sale at their local farmers markets. Also, consider the, number of growing, uh, the growing number of community gardens. In said gardens, community members share the responsibility of cultivating various uh, vegetables, fruits, or legumes, and share their bounty with those in their community. We should allow for a regulatory environment where community members could utilize their community gardens for the cultivation of cannabis. Cannabis can and should be sold by the community to help support local programs, mutual aid, or various welfare services. Loosening of the regulatory uh, licensing requirements will increase the economic mobility of those less fortunate and those on the margins of our society. In order for small businesses to thrive, the cap on 5,000 square feet for outdoor uh, growing purposes needs to be increased to a bare minimum of three acres. This would allow farmers to plan for and sustain themselves through losses due to theft or environmental forces. While every business owner seeks to grow their business, the licensing provisions in this bill would make growth for the small business owner too onerous. In short, it would be too expensive for a small business to grow if they have to meet the licensing requirements in this bill. As it is currently written, the licensing requirements of the bill only serve to benefit large corporate pharmaceutical operations at the expense of small businesses and the consumer. Furthermore, requiring plants to be grown indoors would knock family farms out of growing. They would need to make heavy capital investments to grow. The stated reasons for indoor grows are prim primarily environmental. Yet the current hemp farm products are already tested for herbicide and pesticide contaminants that should be the standard, the lab results, not if the plants were grown inside or outside. In addition to this, indoor growing requires a lot of electricity to power the lights and the irrigation systems. This would add stress to an already leveraged energy system. Another aspect worth considering is the point system. Points are given to minority or women-owned businesses, but not for organic or regenerative farmers. What is desperately needed in the cannabis industry are products grown with organic and regenerative processes. This is both good for the consumer and the environment. Cannabis plants can be used to decontaminate the soil, as was done at the site of a former steel mill in Italy, with the land now being used for agriculture. The flip side to this, unfortunately, is that any materials absorbed by the cannabis plant can be released when smoked by the user. This is one of the many reasons why we need to have a regulatory environment that allows for organic and regenerative practices. I previously mentioned the idea that licensing allows for consumers to trust the producers they are interacting with. Ask any member of a farmer's market what the most significant form of regulatory licensing is and they will tell you it's trust, plain and simple. A farmer's market operates off of trust, trust between consumers and producers. And in smaller community-centric farmer's markets, which many of them are, trust is the currency with which they operate. While I can understand the desire to ensure this trust and safety for your constituents, what I hope is that you will consider trusting the people of Minnesota. I believe that all Minnesotans want what is best for their communities and that they should be trusted. We consider this the official position of the Libertarian Party on Article 1 of HF 100. Thank you for your time.